We're recording. Hello, I'm Paul Vanuk from Recording Magazine. Welcome to our latest video review. Today, we're taking a look at the Reamp Station from Canada's Radial Engineering, which I originally reviewed in the December 2022 issue of Recording Magazine. The Reamp Station is one of the latest additions to the growing collection of radial engineering reamp focused devices. The Reamp Station combines a radial JCR reamp device with an active direct box together in a single unit. Radial engineering and the term reamping are inextricably tied together. Reamping is the process of sending a dry, recorded signal, usually guitar or bass, from your DAW into a specialized device, the reamp box, back out into an amplifier. The sound of the amp is captured through a microphone and a preamp and recorded back into your session, thus the term reamping. Similar to how we use the word Kleenex when we're referring to tissues, we tend to use the word reamp synonymously with the process that I just described. However, it's important to note that Radial actually owns the trademark on the word reamp and there are now 10 distinct reamp devices available in the Radial engineering line. We've reviewed more than a few of these over the years in the pages of recording, and you can check out my video review and walkthrough of the effects pedal focused EXTC Stereo and EXTC SA here on Recording's YouTube page. You can also check out my video review of the Radial Reamp HP, which was released concurrently with the Reamp Station. As mentioned, the Reamp Station is two radial devices in one, housed in one of the company's robust, powder coated, 14 gauge steel enclosures. The reamp side returns to John Cunaberti's original 1993 passive circuit design, custom wound USA made transformer and all. Just like the radial JCR, it starts with a knob to dial in the perfect output level for your amp. Next, there's a mute switch and a ground lift, which I have found to be an essential feature in my extensive reamping experience. You also get a three position filter with high and low cut options to tailor the signal going into the amp. Radial also adds some additional features to the reamp side of the reamp station not previously found on the JCR. In addition to a choice of balanced XLR and quarter inch reamp inputs and the quarter inch TS reamp out, the reamp station adds a balanced quarter inch link IO that allows you to daisy chain multiple reamp stations to easily feed multiple amplifiers. There's also an eighth inch TRS mini jack on the front. This allows you to feed the unit from a smartphone or a tablet. Moving to the left side of the unit, it's a phantom powered active direct box, which radial also knows a thing or two about. There's a quarter inch instrument input and a quarter inch through to go back out to the amp on the front of the unit. A balanced XLR output is on the back along with a button to flip the phase of the signal. Moving back to the front, there is a 15 dB pad and a button labeled buffer. The buffer is a great addition, not often found on many DI boxes. Anytime you're using a direct box to send signal both to your amplifier and to your DAW simultaneously, and if you're using a guitar or a bass with passive pickups, you run the risk of loading down the impedance and sending a less than optimal signal to both destinations. This buffer helps keep the signal robust enough for both the amp and the direct recorded signal. It's especially great when you're taking a safety tap off of the guitar anytime you're tracking through an amp. I have a lot of experience with radial reamp devices and direct boxes in general, and the reamp station more than lives up to its legacy. Essentially, it just works. But you don't have to take my word for it. Let's check out the reamp station in action. While I own a guitar and a bass in my studio, I am not a guitarist or bassist. Luckily, our associate editor, Alex Hawley, is, and he recorded and sent me some bone dry electric guitar tracks. Let's check them out. Okay, yeah, so that's that's pretty uninspiring. 
but let's see what we can do with the reamp station and my studio's Fender Princeton amp and a pedal or two. First, we will route and send Alex's dry guitar out of my DAW to a physical mono aux bus. Next, we send that signal from my Universal Audio Apollo interface, which in my studio is connected to a patch bay, out to the reamp station. Then we take a quarter inch cable, which goes from the reamp station, and plug it into the amp, or in this case, an overdrive pedal. Then of course, the amp gets mic'd up. In this case, we're going to stick with a classic Shure SM57 into a Chandler TG2 mic preamp. Then this gets routed and recorded into a new channel in our DAW. Let's check out how it sounds. One thing that I love about reamping is the options that it gives you. Even if your studio, like mine, only has one amplifier, you can switch microphones and maybe add an effect and record the whole thing again and layer it. Here, we're going to switch mics to the Royer R10 Hot Rod Edition and add a bit of Echo Fix EFX2 tape delay. We're going to pan it in stereo with the previous track and listen. That was much more inspiring and a great way to add extra guitar layers, even if you love your initial performance. A key takeaway here is to always use a quality direct box, like the one in the reamp station, to capture a safety of your original guitar performance. Returning to the filter switch, a purist might ask, why would I want to alter the dry recorded tone sent to the amp? And that's a fair question. I found the filter handy for chilling out the low end for better mid-range focus or using the high cut to lessen upper end buzz or excessive string noise in the original signal. While the high filter can sound a bit dark, it's very easy to use the amp to boost the highs back to just the right amount of cleaner brightness and shine. To hear the filter in action, I put up one of my favorite condenser microphones, a Paluso P414, a little bit away from the amp just so we can capture a bit more range and show what the filter can do. Another question I get often when it comes to reamping is, can't I just send the signal right out of my DAW directly into the amp? And the answer is yes, you could. But because the signal is going to be the wrong impedance, the level will be too hot. And even if you turn down the signal from your DAW, 
The differing impedance load may react and sound different when it hits the input of your pedals and amp. Plus, you won't get all the fantastic features and options found on the reamp station. As its name implies, the Radial Reamp Station is a simple, effective, one-stop reamp shop, and it's a darn great DI box as well. Since every studio should have one of each on hand, this is a great solution. To learn more about the Radial Reamp Station, stop by RadialENG.com. Also, check out my review alongside the Radial Reamp HP in the December 2022 issue of Recording Magazine. If you enjoyed this video review, be sure to give us the thumbs up below. And better yet, subscribe to Recording's YouTube channel for additional video reviews, product comparisons, how-to videos, and more. Then stop by recordingmag.com for the best in all things recording, where you can subscribe to our print publication, which is now in its 36th year. We'll see you soon.